Hi, and welcome to a new episode of IT Conversations. In this episode, we're going to talk about AI in the enterprise. And together with me is my colleague, Robert Klosterhuis. Robert, welcome to this video. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about AI in the enterprise, but that all starts with uh, something that's um, uh, dear to you, which is Tanzu. Can you explain our viewers uh, what Tanzu is and um, uh, the differences between the, the different flavors of Tanzu as we uh, know it today? So Tanzu is, um, is a very large portfolio of products that VMware makes around running cloud-native applications. Um, Kubernetes is a huge part of it. It's certainly not the only part of it. Um, but uh, the Kubernetes runtime is kind of the foundation that you need to run modern applications on. And uh, VMware, has, as a part of the Tanzu portfolio, has made different versions of uh, the Kubernetes runtime that can be used in different ways. Um, so uh, we have um, the, the kind of the core runtime that VMware made around uh, for Tanzu is called Tanzu Kubernetes Grid. It is uh, that's the core technology. That uh, it, it's it's basically a um, a VMware flavored Kubernetes distribution, uh, very open source based, uh, very much aligned with the Kubernetes project and cluster API project. Um, that forms the the core of it. Uh, there's a version of Tanzu Kubernetes Grid that they've integrated very deeply into vSphere, and we call this vSphere with Tanzu. And that version takes the, the this TKG core technology and integrates it deeply into vSphere, so you get all of, um, you get AI, UI elements that show up in the uh, vSphere UI that we all know and love. Um, so you can kind of, uh, it's less of a black box and uh, more kind of user-friendly for, uh, for people currently running vSphere and um, wanting to add a Kubernetes runtime to them, to what they, you know, they offer their um, uh, offer their business, right? And and it's basically an evolution of solutions that we knew as Pivotal uh, Kubernetes Service PKS, right? Kind of. Um, so um, I would say that's a slightly different branch, right? Um, VMware has uh, reacquired Pivotal. It was originally spun out of uh, VMware. Um, they have their own distribution of Kubernetes. It is actually quite different from the one that we find. Uh, in, in vSphere, but at the end of the day, Kubernetes is always Kubernetes. Uh, and that's what's so cool about it. Doesn't matter which particular distribution you take, um, uh, Kubernetes will always work in the same way. Right. Now, um, I think one of the, the big added, uh, uh, added values of, uh, uh, of Tanzu is that it enables not only an entire organization and, for instance, developers to run their uh, applications natively on vSphere, but it also enables IT to simplify a lot of management uh, around those uh, those containers. Uh, can you explain a bit uh, about the, um, uh, the IT side of things? Yeah, so um, Kubernetes is um, still kind of an, an upcoming technology. Um, a lot of application development is, is going to use um, containers and use Kubernetes to run those containers in. Uh, Visa with Tanzu, um, as a Kubernetes distribution, um, makes it quite easy to spin up Kubernetes clusters inside the context of vSphere and um, create additional clusters and uh, condition, um, additional what we call vSphere namespaces uh, to uh, organize those clusters, to organize the resource use around those clusters. So it makes it quite easy to control how Kubernetes is consumed inside vSphere. Um, and uh, crucially, uh, vSphere Tanzu kind of has two operating modes. You can um, spin up entire Kubernetes clusters, and those are basically just VMs. And you can, you know, they're automatically put in a namespace, which is kind of like a resource pool. So you can, you know, kind of tenant off uh, resource use quite effectively. Um, but there's also an, a, um, a unique kind of thing to, to vSphere with Tanzu, which is this embedded mode that it has. You can run certain container workloads natively on ESX itself using, um, it uses a, a kind of a very light VM abstraction. It's not a real VM. It's not, um, and it, it, it allows you to, uh, to with your container workload, sit very close to the ESX hardware, uh, which, I, which, um, which is, of course, extremely useful if you're running certain hardware accelerated functions inside ESX, for example, GPU acceleration. Right, and this is uh, one of the topics that we're going to talk about in this video. So, Jan, um, we've heard a lot recently about something called NVIDIA AI Enterprise, which I think is tied into this use of GPU acceleration. Um, can you maybe tell me more about that? One of the challenges that we, we've been facing for, for many years is it's, it's pretty hard to run a GPU accelerated um, uh, workload, like a container, natively on a hypervisor like vSphere. 
Um, I, I would even say that running distributed workloads through Kubernetes, which are accelerated, was a, was a, um, well, a challenge in general because you needed to basically build a lot of uh, things from scratch. It wasn't really uh, possible to, from an IT perspective to easily manage those workloads. But the introduction of vSphere with Tanzu um, and uh, better yet, the partnership between VMware and NVIDIA, which they announced at VMworld uh, 2020, um, things start to accelerate, which no pun intended. But um, what we are now seeing is that the introduction of NVIDIA AI Enterprise, which is a first attempt or a first version of that, uh, that strong partnership between the two um, uh, giants in, in the tech industry, enables customers to run a native, um, uh, let's, call, let's say a data science workload based on a, uh, um, a containerized um, uh, image, native on vSphere and accelerated through, so, uh, through a GPU. So uh, for uh, people who were already familiar with uh, assigning, for instance, a GPU workload or a GPU profile to a VM, what we now do is basically the same. Instead of assigning such a GPU profile to a VM, we assign it natively, natively to a container. And um, we can do that through different um, uh, uh, ways. We can assign, uh, for instance, a, a, an entire GPU to, uh, to a workload, or we can share a GPU amongst multiple workloads. And especially when talking about distributed um, uh, workloads um, that, that are um, uh, built of multiple containers, um, that's that's uh, really uh, really valuable. Now, uh, one of the challenges we we were facing in general when talking about data science workloads is that um, customers built them quite often as monoliths. So they had their VM, um, they had their uh, 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 Linux distribution running inside of it, uh, all of the, the NVIDIA frameworks and drivers uh, as a base layer, and they basically built their application. Um, and their, uh, their trained data inside that virtual machine. Now, uh, VMware um, enabled customers to run those containers natively, and NVIDIA built a, um, a cloud repository, which is called the NVIDIA GPU Cloud, uh, and that enables customers to simply pull a Docker file from uh, that repository, run it natively on vSphere, and uh, all of those, uh, those uh, uh, Docker files already contain basic stuff like uh, um, uh, CUDA frameworks, uh, like um, their TensorFlow um, uh, framework, for instance, for, uh, for training of data. Uh, it, all of the native um, frameworks that are required and APIs to run such a workload are already part of that, um, uh, that Docker file. So, when, for instance, um, uh, wanting to, uh, to, uh, to run an accelerated workload, the only thing that the IT admin or the developer needs to do is simply pull such a container um, and, and basically run that container with your own scripts or your, with your own software to, um, uh, to make use of, uh, of acceleration. So it is really valuable, but it requires um, CI CD pipelines. Um, and then I strongly believe that this is one of the things that you uh, uh, you can uh, uh, explain our viewers what um, uh, why that is uh, uh, so valuable to uh, to to the organization. Yeah. So to run any kind of containerized workload at scale, you're not going to do things manually. Um, I mean, you can you can log into a Kubernetes cluster with kubectl. You can um, you know load in a container image manually from a repository. You can add the, uh, the service objects you need around it, you know, for, for things like ingress to get at the workload, um, add containers to it for maybe a, you know, a user interface or something that's monitoring your primary process. You're not going to do that manually. You're going to build scripting and automation around that uh, to enable it. And you're going to use a Kubernetes cluster as an endpoint. That's where the workloads run, and that's where you're going to run these ML workloads. Um, but you're going to have a, somewhere a pipeline structure that is going to feed all that stuff and do it at scale, and and um, when we say at scale, we also mean scalable, because you're not going to run one container. Um, if you're going to you know, process data, uh, you know, using um, hardware acceleration, it's probably going to be more than one container. It's probably going to be more than 100 containers. Yeah. Um, so you're going to want to automate this in a way. Um, CI/CD, or what we call continuous integration, continuous delivery. Um, it's kind of a, a catch-all word that describes tools and tool sets that allow you to automate. Um, 
uh, how you um, build and then push and deploy applications, and especially in a repeatable manner so that you can iterate on them really fast. Um, so um, CI-CD pipelines are a very normal uh, part of software development these days. Um, in this case, you would combine um, uh, develop a pipeline in CI-CD with obviously using these very kind of specialized um, prepared containers um, to build out you know, a, a machine learning or an AI workload. Um, but it would be pushed in the same way to Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes is just the endpoint. Uh, and you don't want to manage any of that stuff manually. Um, so the vSphere admins using vSphere or Tanzu very easily can create Kubernetes clusters on demand. Um, even the creation of these clusters can be automated. So you could include um, ad hoc cluster creation um, or cluster expansion as part of a CI CD pipeline. Um, so, uh, so that the resource is provisioned completely dynamically. Or you can do, you know, you can, you can the vSphere admins can, can prepare things and then just become endpoints that, that can be used. Um, in any case, uh, it'll be pipelines and automation that are actually pushing this stuff into Kubernetes. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, that's... Um... Awesome. Well, uh, thanks so much for explaining this. Um, if you'd like to know more about NVIDIA AI Enterprise and VMware Tonsu and how we can help you uh, to run those accelerated workloads natively on Tanzu, we can offer you help with a uh, proof of concept. We can offer you a proof of concept in which we explain what Tanzu is. We explain how N NVIDIA AI Enterprise integrates with it. We can explain you how to uh, uh, get access to the NVIDIA GPU cloud, even introduce you to CICD pipelines. If you want to know more about uh, this offering, feel free to reach out. For now, thanks so much for watching, and we'll definitely see you next time. <laughs>